Can I be serious for just a second? There's a website known as chrono.gg forward slash caddy in the description below that allows you every single 24 hours to find an incredible big budget or indie game on Steam for the cheapest fucking price you can imagine. If you bookmark the site, you'll be able to check it every day to see what's new to buy, and it's a completely legit and reputable service that I use myself before partnering with them. On the screen right now are only a tiny handful of some of the great games that have been on the site, and I honestly can't recommend you heading to the description enough. Remember the name, chrono.gg forward slash caddy, and give yourself a lovely surprise of a cheap game every single day. Don't even start. Why don't you do Cat Icarus episodes on PS1 games anymore? What? I mean, Nursery Rhymes, Spiral on Game Boy Advance, Bennett Folly on PC, George of the Jungle on PS2, what's this shit about exactly? Okay, then what about SpongeBob, A Bug's Life, Rayman 2? I haven't abandoned them or anything, chill out. I miss the old caddy. Oh, won't you just fuck off? No. Oh, so, so you miss this? You miss this? Well, you, you miss that. You you miss that, do you? You prefer nervous voiceover, one video coming out every two weeks at its fastest, overcompressed audio, terrible timing in my editing, and a greasy, spotty face? Okay, don't be a cock splat. I'm not asking for much. I just want you to do more PS1 stuff. Don't push me or you'll regret it. Come on! Okay, you want PS1? I'll give you fucking PS1. Oh, yes! Sure. Here you go, then. Disney's Aladdin in the Zero's Revenge. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Kanakura Show, where I always have to do the duty to deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And this game that I've got right here, this fucking game here, Disney's Aladdin in Nazira's Revenge, is just so bad, so awkward, and so utterly dull that I don't really want to make this video at all. I'm actually going to hide away from this game right now. Da, 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 da. I'm not the biggest fan of Disney's Aladdin. Not the movie itself, I enjoy the movie, and Robin Williams as the genie is easily the best thing about it. Mm, Jafar is pretty cool too, now that I think about it. Jafar cake. But the main driving force behind the movie, Aladdin himself, I just can't stand. Personally, I find him way too smug, too cocky to the point of arrogant, and I know Disney were trying to push him as the cooler heroic figure of their fairy tales, but I never saw it. I just saw a slimy thief with a very <laughs> voice, and because of that, I don't enjoy many of the scenes with him as the focus. And before I piss anyone else off, here's the 2001 PS1 game they made all about him, Disney's Aladdin in Nazira's Revenge, and after doing some research, it turns out this wasn't only the first PS1 game all about the titular Disney character, but also the last video game entirely about him before he just became a side character in all games afterwards. Could it be that this game was just that bad that no other company would touch Disney's Aladdin and make a video game solely about him ever again? Or is it because these companies wised up and realised that he's a jumped up annoying little twat? Let's go and find out! Okay, we start off with some FMV, doesn't look too bad, and this is where we find out the game's plot. This lady, Nazira, is Jaffa Cake's sister. Couldn't you tell from the box art? Reminds me of the last time I casted a spell with my sister's face in it. And she's practising some dark arts in order to talk to Jaffa Cake's spirit, so she can tell him she'll be bringing him back to life soon, which is all fine and dandy, but what's with this flickering hologram effect here? Is this Aladdin or the Phantom Menace? There is a spell of restoration that can breathe precious life. Okay, now, really think about this for a second, game developer. When writing your script, did you seriously require every R in your sentence to roll? It's rancid! All of a sudden, we cut to the Sultan's palace, where a ghostly demonic figure with evil glowing eyes is creeping through the shadows, ready to attack at any second. And what music did they decide to go with for such an image? <laughs> I don't know what's worse though, that music choice or the reaction Jasmine has to being attacked in the middle of the night. Huh? Pfft, really? Even Peach sounds more surprised when Bowser snatches her for the 20th time. Oh look, here we go, it's a land- Oh fuck, slow down, you're gonna crash! We then start a new game and watch some incredibly slow and boring FMV with Genie trying so desperately to be funny, it's painful. Come on, Al! Open your eyes and smell the hummus! After that, the gameplay begins and we immediately see that Aladdin somehow has cleavage on his back and I'm so disgusted that I take the game out and stamp all over the disc. After calming down, I then put the disc back in and try the game again and start running around and... Okay, it doesn't feel too awful just yet. Aladdin has a nice running speed, he's got a sword, he can jump and slide, all good so far. And then I meet up with the Genie and get told that... Coins are the main currency in Agrabah? Oh fucking hell, you're gonna be full of useless obvious information, aren't you? 
Yep, yeah, you are. And can I just say right off the bat that the genie and his gameplay interrupting mindless tutorial took absolutely no time to get on my tits. Luckily you can skip straight through them, but that doesn't excuse the lamp being placed in unavoidable locations and him always starting sentences with Ow, 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 ow. So yeah, these are fucking terrible, which is a great first impression, but I don't know, maybe the collecting things element of the game is fun? What's this thing here? Yeah. <laughs> What? Yeah. Bleh. 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 That's what you say when you grab a new shiny coin looking thing. Bleh. What? D did you eat it? Coming up. Coming up. It's yeah. We then get introduced to a stomping attack, which is, well, as you can see, totally useless, but it's a lot more fun than the actual swashbuckling combat that we'll have to try in the next room along. This is how fighting works in Aladdin, Jaffa Cake's sister is pissed off, and I mean with every single fight. The guard sees you, runs towards you, you stand still and guard them, wait for them to not guard, and tap the attack button. That's the entire combat system and how every single fight goes down, no matter how big or small the enemy is. Oh, unless they're an animal enemy because you can't block them, meaning you're fucked. Watch out, Aladdin the Fucking cushions, rabbit. Some enemies aren't even that interesting. You just throw fruit at them from a distance and sword them once to get by. This isn't a challenge or fun. It's a chore I have to do before moving on. The hit detection is also a total joke. See this here? I'm apparently hitting this guy who is blocking me right now. And you tell me, how does this make any sense? And how about this? What's going on here? What even is that? <laughs> and even for as mindless, easy, and boring the combat is, you can still fuck it up by the fact that guarding only works when you're standing completely still making the combat even slower. If you so much as itch your foot and hit the guard button, Aladdin won't guard and instead slide directly into the enemy like a kid on an oily kitchen floor straight into an oven. <laughs> and after jumping on a zip line and probably killing ourselves, I think we can all agree that Agrabah level 1 is a terrible introduction to a video game. This is then followed by what you do with all of those bleh tokens you find in the stages. They're coins for a slot machine at the end of every level for a chance to get extra lives and continues. <laughs> Well, that is, if you weren't too busy running away screaming from the worst fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Who the hell thought this was a good idea? That aggressive minor key music, those giant dead soulless eyes, the slots hiding within that gaping black void of a mouth, the genie looks like he's choking to death and I can't tell if he's happy or wishing for me to end it all. And don't worry, it's made even worse when you fail at the slots. <laughs> need some milk. You may be wondering though, in the grand scheme of things, if the slot machine can only give you lives and continues, does that mean that's the only way to get them in the game? Well, yes. See the coins? They do absolutely nothing. You get no reward at all for finding them all, and only in one or two places in the entire game do you need to trade the ones within the stage for a quest item to get past a roadblock. So this means in order for you to get even a random chance of another life if you start losing them, which is pretty easy to do, mine, you need to look around and find these very infrequent genie tokens that are always out of of your reach, which often leads you to death just trying to reach them anyway, so don't bother because that genie coin might give you nothing at all once the stage ends. Make snes. You can also find red gems in the levels that give you a chance to play a bonus game to get a valuable blue genie gem. If you beat them, I don't know what that means though, I never found out. But these mini games are the absolute worst part of the whole game since they highlight how truly terrible the jumping and throwing controls are. You'll get a lot of occasions of jumps not making a gap because Aladdin needs a run up for every fucking jump or else he just falls off because of how heady he feels. And you'll get occasions of jumps just not registering at all because of this horrid delay that doesn't exist on any other input except for the jumping. In fact, now that I think about it, you get loads of times like this and with this jump here you have to get past this water current constantly pushing you upwards in extremely slight intervals meaning that the game assumes you're already airborne from the water pushing you up meaning that hitting the jump button sometimes doesn't do anything at all and makes you fall. And for the other occasions in the throwing the control is way too fucking sensitive for sure but at least the game doesn't throw a time limit in there for you to worry about. In the bonus games though just look trying to rush through this cloud bouncing stage with the wonky unresponsive jumping and stiff mid-air control is a nightmare. And even here look I landed on that! The shadow was on the cloud! You fell through! Fuck you! Hope you land safely, Al! What, so you're just gonna let Aladdin die then? Thanks so much, Genie Weasley. And with the throwing game, 30 seconds to hit 10 targets sounds fine, but look at Aladdin's aim. I'm trying my hardest here, but it's so damn sensitive. This is worse than the shooting gallery shit in Ocarina of Time. Yes, of course I failed this bonus game. The controls made it impossible. I couldn't even do this try without careening straight off the fucking cloud because yes, even jumps that easy aren't possible sometimes. And then we end up at the save screen. Okay, the Genie slot machine was scary enough, but now I'm just uncomfortable. What is going on with that face? I, I must have missed that issue of GQ magazine. Honest to God, who the fuck decided to use this image on the save screen? He looks like he wants me to do a lot more than just save the game. I can show you my ass. 
ass. On to Agrabah level 2, and I begin with cutting the throat of an innocent street performer. <laughs> and now with the introduction of ropes to swing from, combined with the heavy, heavy jumping and well, weird fucking camera. Some of these tight jumps and platforms are a mission to get on properly. And by the way, the moving itself despite the nice running speed is insanely fucking sensitive too, which is another reason that Cloud Game earlier is such a load of dumb. How are the sound effects in this game? They're terrible. Yeah. And how is the music? Well, we're now up to Agrabah level 3, and what was once a nice original piece of Arabian-inspired action platforming music is now being played over and over and over and over again, with no variation whatsoever. I've been playing the game for 20 minutes so far, and the gameplay music hasn't changed once. It's really starting to become irksome, and I'm sure Omid Jalili over here doesn't like it either. That's another thing with this game too, along with just being, well, Boring. The side things it makes you do, like hitting a guard with fruit before killing him, waiting around for an opening in a sword fight, slowly aiming at targets with a sensitive cursor, being stuck on a slow moving genie slot machine that doesn't just go when you want it to even if you hit X over and over again, waiting for platforms to slowly move you all around. This is all designed to slow the game's pace down to an absolute drag across the floor, and now we have another pointless mechanic that makes it even slower. You need to wait for a shop assistant to fall asleep, then walk extremely slowly to the stall, grab the apples, and walk away. Every time you need more shit to throw, you need to do that in these stages, and it just turns everything down to a crawl. Especially if he's about to wake up, so you let go of the walk button, but let go of it a millisecond too early from his vision radius and gets you completely stuck in a glitch where he catches you for stealing apples over and over again that you aren't stealing at all because you're so close you're practically dancing with him. Kill the guard, awkward platforming, instant death, great. Now I need to run all the way back there from the start of the level, but at least the coins, apples, and items I found are still with me. Head over to the guard, aim, fire, oh, wait, what? I have no apples. Wait, so I respawn with everything I picked up before death, except the apples. Now I need to fucking run back, slowly wait for the shopkeeper to fall asleep, slowly grab the apples and run all the way back again, because this guy's a fucking concrete wall that won't let me carry on with the level without me killing him first. And after all of that, what's inside the room that was so important to guard I had to run a million errands to get through? A cake shop, where I could buy a cake to give to another guard and get past him. How do you sell any fucking cakes when your shop has a bouncer that won't let anyone in. Furthermore, aren't you a thief, Aladdin? You'll steal coins and apples just fine, but not any cakes? Why? You know what? I don't care. Just throw some more fucking apples at some fucking birds, run out of apples with one bird remaining because of shitty controls, and so I need to run back through the entire fucking stage just to get more apples and run all the way back just so you can hit the last bird and win a fucking flute from a little boy. This game is horrible. <sighs> okay, sorry. I'm calm down now. Basically, fuck Agrabah level three. The other levels weren't too awful, but the design here is Asinine. All you do in this entire stage is run back and forth through the same empty, drawn out, boring rooms and then hit switches to get to more areas you need to run back and forth through. It's boring enough on its own, but even worse with those rooms where you fall down to the bottom of the room and have no way to climb back up without going even further back through the level. And what do I get after all of this as my reward? Princess Jasmine on a skateboard, you can't make this shit up! This is embarrassing. Look at the camera. Look at the sensitive controls working in overdrive, making the easiest jumps impossible. And check this out. In order for you to make these long jumps, you need to kick the floor to speed up. Problem is, though, this kicking animation is so long that you can't jump while doing it. Meaning that in order for you to have enough speed before you jump, you need to know exactly where to kick the floor, otherwise you'll just pathetically slide off during an air walk, grab and plummet to your death. Why are we controlling Jasmine anyway? Wasn't she kidnapped? Huh? After this, we get the Sultan's Palace and Dungeon stages, once again all totaling about half an hour with the same music track playing over them. All with awfully stiff and awkward platforming, stupid enemies, running back and forth gameplay, and even a lovely level where we play as the bloody monkey, who not only attacks with the most inefficient and self-harming role in existence, but also has the ability to double jump off of flat walls by pressing X near them whenever you face them after your first jump. And guess what? It doesn't fucking work half the time. That's really handy. Oh, and if Genie wasn't annoying enough for you yet, here's the Gilbert Godfrey parrot. <laughs> the dungeons end with Aladdin doing something I'm sure a lot of people have a fetish for, and then we start flying the magic carpet insanely fast with more sensitive controls through a crumbling building killing you every five seconds, sometimes letting you fly through the building itself, giving you a slow down command that has limited uses before deciding to stop working entirely, respawning checkpoints that launch you straight into danger, Checkpoint. Ah! and I mean just look at this mess, I am totally and utterly completely done with this game. So there you go, quick J-Horse throw, I did a PS1 game, are you happy now? Now. Fantastic.
fantastic, he killed himself, and if I can smell that correctly, I think when he died, he left his vape on the on switch, which means that any second now, the whole house will catch fire. So yes, I'm gonna be quick about this. Aladdin in Zero's Revenge gets the slaughter today. And if it's your birthday today while watching this video, then happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Now, I need to go and quickly sort out this fire before we all fucking die. <laughs> yeah, and they said vaping was better for your health than smoking. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for watching this entire video of Disney's Aladdin on PS1. It was a good fun time, wasn't it? And special thanks to all of the people on the screen right now who have helped support this channel through the YouTube demonetization nonsense via Patreon. And of course, as always, special thanks to the top, top, top tier supporters, which you can find out how to get yourself if you just look in the description below. But it's entirely optional. Please don't worry. No one's holding a gun to your head. It's absolutely optional. Omama2, Basil, Patrick Ferguson, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Tanner Craft, Chris N. Ingersoll, Exopaz, Thomas Olsen, Star Iro Lance J, I'm really sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Super Spyro Fan 2010, Daniel Leon, Jane Ives, Mitchell Reed, AD Thornton Smith, Oblivion Rising, Noxious, Ellen Realpley, Kirsten B, QB, Nathan Young, and Nicole Ganara. Thank you so much, every single one of you.